listening to KCMP Ferguson, 89.5 The Wave, and this is Fear the Dead Air, with your host, Jazz Hands. When civilization ends, it ends fast. That is right, you are listening to Fear the Dead Air, and I'm your host, the one, the only, your friendly neighborhood DJ, Jazz Hands. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of my co-hosts uh, kind of got uh, eaten today by a pack of walkers, so uh, I, for now at least, am doing this solo. Uh, we'll see how this goes. I'm actually quite quite excited. Uh, we get to hang out, just you and me personally, and we never really kind of get to do that, so uh, I'm... Actually, kind of chill, chill about it today. So, let's dive in right now to the season finale of Fear the Walking Dead. That's right, the season titled The Good Man uh, aired last Sunday. And man, man, oh man, oh man, talk about definitely ramping stuff up when it's supposed to. I mean, for a show that really hasn't shown any walkers or any of the dead so far. Uh, they really made it up to us. They really, really made it up to us, uh, with last night's episode or, uh, last Sunday's, I apologize, last Sunday's episode. So, uh, let's, you know, kind of dive right in. My, my, my first kind of initial thought of the overall episode was it was good. It was definitely, what I was kind of looking for in a show in this show, there was definitely some problems with it that I had right off the bat. I mean, some of the character development, like some of the characters that I was kind of 50, 50 on. Um, I, I really thought that they could have, I, I thought by this time they would have been had come full circle. There were some character developments that I had a problem with uh, overall, the, over, the theme of the episode, what kind of went on, was very entertaining and very, very fun. So I, I'm a little bit still, you know, on the fence about this series. I don't know if I like it or if I don't. It's interesting, and I'm going to dive into it a little bit later. But, I mean, my overall episode was, it was good. I, I, I am glad that we got to see these walkers. Now, I'm... I'm I, I am one that doesn't need to have a walker in every episode or doesn't have to, doesn't need a zombie kill in every episode to enjoy the show. It can have hardly any walkers in it, and I'm fine with that. Um, but it, it's still... It, the story-wise and the character-wise just weren't picking up enough so that it did get kind of boring for me at certain moments, at least throughout the season, because I'm going to also be looking at this through a season... Uh, perspective from a season point of view and kind of viewing it as a whole for like what it is as a season. So episode wise, it, it, it was entertaining and, and I'll get off the kind of character development right now. I'll, I'll dive right into that. I mean, I thought it was for where they are now, how they feel now, what kind of been going on. It was really, really, really cold of them and really, really kind of, you know, they were D bags for just kind of driving away to go save their family and then looking at the neighbors like they don't even know what's going on. <sighs> well, we didn't get any warning when they came in and invaded us. <sighs> like, it's like these people are essentially innocent. They're your neighbors. Why not try to gather them and be like, look, this is what's going on. This is what's happening. They have our family, we're going to go here. Uh, you guys get out. You guys get out now. You get to safety. You find sanctuary. You know, go to the desert. We're going to try to meet in the desert. We need to stick together as, you know, one big group. We need to survive. We have to survive this. I would have loved to have seen that. You know, Travis really kind of bloom off. Like, the whole family did. And it seemed cold. Like, huh, these guys can't do it. They can't survive. Like, it... To me, that was just so. I I, I didn't I, I really didn't like that. I for at this point in time, if you're still viewing the walkers as walkers, or, or if you're viewing the walkers as people, why wouldn't you go and try to save your neighbors and your friends that you've known forever? Why not try to save them? Why just leave them alone? Like, was it too late already? Did they know that they couldn't save them? Because I still think they should have tried as good people and as 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 it says in the title episode the good man you would think that travis would actually try and save some people but instead 
they just left. And that, that was kind of one of the big major problems I had with it. And then later on in the episode, they, you know, saved those people. And it's like, okay, so you saved those people, but you wouldn't save the other people. And essentially you saved these people to be slaughtered by walkers. Like, I don't understand the moral compass like as of right now, like I'm trying to find it and I'm not finding it. And it's really, really weird. And that's where I say, because these characters just seem so selfish and so kind of blase, I I, I feel that they, that these, this is going to supposedly be an evolution of bad guys. That this is going to be the evolution of how people become selfish. People, become cold and i mean they already have the kind of comparisons where they call travis the mayor and the governor i mean let's be realistic you know uh eventually we're gonna get like the huge tabletop of like the governor the mayor um we'll get uh eventually with one of because the walking dead who knows in like six more years when we're on season six of fear the walking dead uh we'll get a new spinoff and the next guy is going to be you know the the town counselor you know <laughs> something like that the coach something like that that would actually be really funny if they left for dead oh anyway <laughs> um but i digress uh yeah so that was kind of some of the like as a group character flaws that i really kind of had they st- they were just way too cold for where they try for where they're trying to be. And especially when they're trying to portray that, um, there are good people trying to make it in this world that they're, they're supposed to be good hearted people. And they just like, they, they won't kill a walker, but they won't warn their neighbors that danger's coming and the military's backed out. So, uh, that was kind of weird. Now, one thing that I did really like was the kind of back and forth that Travis and the military man, uh, whose name is Melvin James. Is that it? Yes. No, I did like the back and forth between Sergeant Melvin, uh, James and, um, Travis, how, Travis really took it on good faith. And I don't think this makes him a good man because he left his neighbors. That still, that irks me. That irks me greatly. Greatly. You have no idea. You have no idea how much that irks me. But anyway, I, I, I I digress. Um, sorry. I, I, I digress. You know, it, I like the little back and forth that the two of them had and how he, he fully did trust him. Uh, on letting him go, you know, I think that the character wise there was, I'm going to give this guy a shot. You know, he's Travis is definitely, I feel that his mindset is very much. I still think that the world's going to be okay. Uh, he's, I think he's kind of like Herschel was in season two when we first got kind of get introduced to him where it's like, they're sick. Um, these are still people because nothing in the seasons really had him, had me think that he's changed his mind. But I think he's still very much uh, trying. He still believes that there's hope. He still believes that there is. I mean, there's always hope. But, you know, he still believes that there's going to be a normal society. And that eventually uh, it's going to be like the military is going to come in uh, eventually and be like, okay, well, we got everything under control. It was just a little thing. We're good. Go back to your homes. We're fine. Everybody's safe and happy. And, you know, happy ending. You know, bada bing, bada boom. Boom, done. Uh, But. He, 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 he strongly believes that. And I, 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 I mean, I can understand him too. I would feel very, very bad for, uh, Mr. Sergeant Melvin James. You know, I would feel really bad for him because essentially he's a nice guy. He's a part of the military that kind of got screwed over by the Salazars, you know, kidnapped, tortured, like let them go. You know, I, I think really that was because he's kind of done some stuff, but he's back down. But I really think letting him go was his first real big act as coming into a leader. It was kind of him going out to go get his family and stuff. And him letting him go was him being a leader and kind of showing that he may be going down the same road as a Rick Mock as a, the uh, dictatorship. I don't know yet. Um, but it seems like, you know, he's going to be like, that was my decision. Stick to it. I'm going to stick to it. And if it comes back and bites me in the butt, which we all know in this world 
that if you don't resolve something, it's going to come back and bite you in the butt. If you don't stop something or if you allow uh, one person from a group uh, that was your enemies to run away, maybe they won't come back. More likely they would. And if you're going to war with another group or if you've done something, you need to kind of tie up loose ends. And I think they by doing this, they definitely... Um, got there quick. They got there quick. I, I will get the show this as a whole. Some of the, the, the characters still aren't where our characters are. I'm not expecting them to be that, but they do know a lot of stuff a lot quicker. They know, boom, shot to the head. Well, Rick knew shot to the head once when he uh, started, but I mean, you know, shot to the head, ends um, uh, um, what else? Like, you know, shot to the head, uh, that everybody's infected and if you die you come back like they actually knew that if you die you'd come back before they knew about the bite so that was actually kind of interesting they knew that when you died you'd come back no matter what but then they knew but then the bites are what spread it quicker and so they actually knew that beforehand and i did like that that was kind of fun that was a new little you know twist and you know i because of the ending it kind of would have been nice to see her stick around and maybe not know about the bite yet because then that's the way they learn. And yeah, it would have been a lot more horrible, but I think that would have been kind of fun at least to kind of watch and see. Um, another thing that, you know, I, 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 I enjoyed, I enjoyed the overall ambiance of the episode. I feel that the, uh, the feel of the episode, kind of what was going on. It, it was definitely a traditional rescue mission episode. Um, but the creepy scenery, you know, their overall plan, like, and this, this is kind of what my brother said. And I, I, I totally agree where they are right now is they, th- th- and this is the character development again. They are very, very confusing as characters because one minute you think, oh, they're kind, caring people. They'll let this guy go. They'll do this. And then all of a sudden they pull governor type warfare where they use walkers as maybe as a distraction, but they still use walkers as a weapon. You know, it was a really cool scene to see Salazar walk out. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's a nice night. It's a very nice night. And they kept walking and you just see these herd of walkers. I mean, you know, uh, in like earlier season of the walking dead, people were freaked out by one or two walkers walking at them. And this guy had hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of them, like just walking behind. And he was just cool as a cucumber. I do like Salazar a little bit as a bad guy, as like a, a, a good character. No, I don't like him. He's no Herschel. He's no Herschel. I'm sorry, but he's not supposed to be Herschel. So I can, I, I can understand that. And I can totally agree with that. Um, but you know, it, it it was, it's it's a problem again with the characters that I had, where it was so much governor, it was so kind of lousy and really kind of like you're using these things as weapons to kind of get what you want. Granted, it was to protect your family, yes, but to use these things as weapons, I feel it's gone from man to man, and it's gone from now you're really taking advantage of the situation. I mean, granted, you can argue well i mean rick uses them as weapons once in a while uh you know he 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 used the uh the walker bomb against joseph and his uh uh joseph and his crew um yeah you could say that's one thing but i really wouldn't take that into consideration that was your backs against the wall this was they had the opportunity to kind of get in and get out now I, i i don't remember the start of season five uh I think they might have used them, but I, it's it's always kind of been with. It, it it's always kind of been where if Rick and his group used walkers, and I am kind of, it, it's two different beasts, and I think Chris Hardwick, you know, said it best. Like you know, I I'm still enjoying being with The Walking Dead. I'm just kind of uh, flirting with Fear the Walking Dead. You know, Walking Dead's younger sister. Uh who is sweet, but, you know, is it as fun? Um, so, I'm, I mean, it, it always seems like The Walking Dead, whenever they do use walkers as weapons, they had a reason to. With Terminus, they needed to out. They needed distraction. Those guys were going to kill them no matter what. So, 
that was their back against the wall. We have to use these walkers as weapon. They've always kind of used walkers as weapons when they needed to. This, they didn't need to. They could have found a way in. They could have snuck in. I mean, what's her face? Probably if they somehow kind of got in contact with uh, the mom, whose name is, uh, yes, Lizza. Uh, I'm so sorry that I went blank there. Um, but yes, Lizza, um, you know, she, uh, her, her whole, they could have, they could have found a way to get her out and to kind of let her, she could have let them. And I feel that using the walkers, you as weapons, when you don't absolutely need to, you become something more. You're, it's clear that these things are dangerous and I'm using them as weapons against people, blah, 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 blah to get an advantage. I, I, I don't know. To me, that just feels very douchey and it, it, it feels very much, um, it, it feels very, very much, uh, governor type. It feels very cold. It, 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 it I don't like that kind of warfare. I really, really don't like that kind of warfare. But I, I still got so much to kind of talk about, so much to go into. It's not going to be, because I don't really have anything, there's everybody with me, there's not going to be a lot, a lot to kind of go back and forth with. So you're just sticking with me. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode. But well, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be fun. I'm having a lot of fun right now just talking. Um, and I'm super excited because this time next week, Hopefully we'll have a full cast. Hopefully we'll have everybody here. I know I already got some people that are like, okay, yeah, low fear, whatever, but Walking Dead, give me on on that. So uh, it's going to be fun. Season six starts this weekend. Uh, I am very, very excited for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, But stay tuned because I will be back in a little bit, everybody. Like the dead rising, we are back. You are listening to Fear the Dead Air, only on 89.5 The Wave. That is right, you are listening to Fear the Dead Air, and I am your host, the one, the only, your friendly neighborhood DJ Jazz Hands, and I am going solo on this mission today. That is right, you were just hanging out with me, myself, and I, and you know what I forgot to mention? I totally meant to do this earlier. Uh, if you're interested in hearing some more people kind of talk and the evolution of the show, I have, uh, should be getting up tonight, but I have the entire, like, season of Fear the Dead Air on my Facebook page, and it's facebook.com slash STL Dead Air. That's facebook.com slash STL Dead Air, so you can listen to all the other old episodes, uh, kind of comment what you thought, what you didn't like about those certain episodes, were we right, were we wrong about some predictions we made, what have you, but check out the Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash STL Dead Air. Hopefully see you soon. So now we are talking about the season finale of Fear the Walking Dead, titled The Good Man, uh, last Sunday's episode, and I kind of said earlier about what I felt, how I didn't really like some of these characters, and I still kind of don't. They're still kind of, I feel, generic and kind of blasé uh, to me, and their decisions on what's right, what's wrong, who to save, who shouldn't save, I feel are very, very skewed, and the fact that they use walkers as weapons is um, not, it doesn't sit well with me. You can use walkers as weapons when you you, you when your back's against the wall, but they I th- I feel that they had other options, and I feel that the the um the group right now is definitely missing the moral compass. They they don't have a Glenn. They don't they they don't have a a Tyrese. You know they don't have a Herschel yet. It's just very eh, to me. It's <laughs> that that the characters are very. Eh, but the episode in and of itself was. Very, very good. Now, I want to talk a little bit about Mr. Strand. Now, I, 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 his name is Strand. I call him Satan because he just feels like Satan. He feels like, and it wouldn't surprise me if somehow, some way, it's revealed that, like, oh, yes, I am Satan, uh, and I've uh, pretty much just opened the world uh, filled with walkers to take back, and it becomes some weird supernatural type stuff. Uh, but I... I, I, I digress. So, I mean, he is a very interesting character, and we're learning a little bit more about him. I mean, it's kind of clear 
if they're if they, if I feel that these characters are already really kind of cold and don't care, it's clear that he is one that really doesn't care. He just does not care, and he's going to be the one to kind of get in trouble to where I almost see maybe a Shane thing happening with him where he's going to be a loose cannon. He's going to be the one to kill first, ask questions later. Uh, and I could see him kind of getting the whole group in, into the tr- into uh, a little bit more trouble than they need to. I mean, but he did introduce a really cool kind of plot. And, you know, it's because what we were talking about a little bit earlier in the season, you can go back and listen to that at uh, facebook.com. Either way, um, you can go back and listen to it. Uh, I said that I, 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 I liked the idea of Walker's or at least the infected, the zombies, uh, the dead, have you, um, in different areas. I mean, we got, we've we seen them in uh, Atlanta, and, you know, we've seen them kind of crusty. We've, we've, we've seen that. We've seen some water ones. Those ones were really, really cool. And I think we're going to get to see more of those, especially at the big reveal at the end. That was a cool, that, get, that got me excited for season two. That got me excited because now they're doing something a little bit different. It isn't about survival. It's they have a goal in mind. And let's get this out of the way real quick. Let's let's get it out of the way. Uh, I'm on a boat. Uh, look at take a good hard look at uh, my mother's dead boat. <laughs> that got dark real quick. I apologize, but at the end of the episode, you know what can I say? Uh, we have to have the corny jokes, especially me having to have the corny jokes because we are big on very very corny jokes. Here, very, very fun jokes, and we haven't been able to get any so far these last six weeks, so I'm trying extra, extra, extra hard to give you some. So, but other than that, Strat is a very interesting character, and I'm wondering to see kind of what they do with him and where they go with him. Uh, it's clear that he's fun with money, and it, it's also clear that he's he he doesn't like he. How do, how, do, how, do, how do I wear this? How do I, he's very, very cold. I mean, especially when he walked up to the guy that was dying. It was just like, you know, keep the watch. Keep the watch. Like, there was almost like he's happy that it's happening. He loves it. And we still don't understand him fully. I mean, what, in, in any of the episodes that I watched, because I'm, I'm sure I watched as many episodes as, I've watched the episodes as you did. Um, and I've analyzed them and stuff like that. But when in the episode do they ever give him real personality? Like, not personality, but give him a background to say who he is. I mean, we get introduced to him where he's making uh, Doug, poor Doug, cry. And, and then, yeah, like, he's all over the place. He's such an interesting kind of character. And I, I can't wait to see more about him. I can't, re- I really can't wait, you know. It, he's, he looks like he's going to be fun. He really, really looks like he's going to be a lot of fun. He's going to be a fun character to kind of mess with. Um, now, there is one other problem that I kind of did have with the overall season. I'm looking at the overall season kind of now, and I'll go back into the episode. No, let me stay with the episode. Let me stay with the episode. So, okay, um, I'm going to say this, and I'm probably there's probably going to be people wrong against or saying that, oh, man, Jazz Hands, what are you talking about? Like, no, it wasn't. It's like, yeah, yeah, it was when you really think about it. Um... I am not surprised that, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Ophelia. Yeah. I'm really not surprised that he was, that, you know, she was shot by Sergeant James. Really? Like, I don't know. I was talking about this a little bit earlier because the Salazar's kind of deserved it. They made the first move. They took somebody and tortured him. It would be like if somebody stole Glenn and took Glenn and tortured. Well, that happened, didn't it? Good old Big Brother Merle, and they kind of let him into the group. <laughs> but there were certain circumstances. But it's it's like if one of our characters from The Walking Dead was taken, tortured, and then let go. Uh, yeah, it's let go. Maybe they drop it. But I think Rick would definitely be like, we're going to get revenge. They can't do that. They can't do that. So the Salazar's totally had it coming. And I was talking to uh, a good friend of mine and professor here, Drew Foster, he, we were kind of talking about it, and I, I, as sick and as twisted as it is, I kind of liked that there was this element, this kind of badness where he'll be like, I'm mad, and not necessarily mad, but where he'd be like, you hurt me, and the most thing that's going to hurt you is to take it out on the ones you love. 
I don't know why I love that. I love that. That shows true bad guy finesse. And it's 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 just fun and sick and twisted. And you're like, why do I like this so much? But I do. Because if he shot Salazar, it's like, okay, well, he shot Salazar. That's fine. But he didn't want to just shoot Salazar and hurt him. He wanted to hurt, hurt Salazar. He wanted to cripple Salazar. And the best way to do that is, well, his wife's dead. And now his daughter's going to get shot because of something he did. And that's what I was saying a little bit earlier, where you, in this world, you have to wrap stuff up. You can't have loose strings because they're going to come back to bite you in the butt and slowly and slowly like unthread the, the 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 sweater you know the sweater that you've made so i absolutely love that i i i liked that quite a lot it was it was a fun sick kind of twisted and then of course we got travis my boy travis he went ape he went ape he totally demolished like just simply demolished that poor guy you know he punched him in the face and that that really jazz hands conspiracy number uh Seven six eight. Um, you know, that really does make me think that uh, Travis did have something to do with, with that he had a past that he has had a like really kind of dark past because he went up on this guy and beat him. And if somebody that has you know is very much has no backbone, like people have kind of said, or is very soft. And timid and, oh, yeah, yes, sir, I, I understand. No, no, sir, I'm not threatening you. Kind of attitude for him to just all of a sudden boom, boom, boom. And, I mean, the Army guy was just, like, out. He was done. He was just done. So, you know, I, I, I think Travis has had a past, a very, very violent past. I mean, he said, you know how many noses I've been, I've had broken in and stuff like that? So I really think that Travis has had a past, and we'll see in season two. Uh, coming up, you know, uh, sometime next year, 2016. So we will definitely see in season two kind of where he goes with that. Um, another kind of thing that I, I liked was, and this is what I was talking about earlier. And this is kind of tra- back traveling a little bit, going from the episode back to the atmosphere and how I've said that fear the walking dead has had opportunities to have such fun and they kind of glossed over some of the important stuff or some of the cool stuff that we would have liked to see to show us stuff that nobody really cares about. Uh, the part where it was Strad and Nicholas. Strand and Nicholas. And they were kind of running through the building. The lights were clicking. There were walkers slowly walking towards them. That was such a terrifying and freaky moment. And I loved it. I want to see more of that stuff because it's like your back's against the wall. You've, you know, unloaded the clip. You were done. There's lights flashing, you know, the atmosphere, there's death. That's such a cool, fun scene. And I wanted to get that more. And I would have thought we would have gotten that more within like the city when we had the, um, the riot, you know, when we had all this other stuff and they've kind of glossed over it. And I'm glad that they actually took some time out to show some of this stuff, you know, the military fighting back, you know, the battle of military running. I mean, the poor guy that, you know, lost his head. That was so sad. Well, it was so cool to see because I kind of wanted to see more of that. You know, I wanted to see the battles. I wanted to see the fights. You know, if this was going to be back before, you know, I want to actually see the fall of Los Angeles, not... Well, we got everybody in, in, in the thing, and now we got one place to protect. It would have been cool to see the fall of Los Angeles, them running block to block to try to get away with uh, cats running in the streets, walkers everywhere, the military everywhere, just shooting everybody. It would have been so, so much fun, and they just kind of glossed over it. And that, that It's an opportunity missed, but I'm glad that I kind of uh, retouched on it in this episode. It was a lot of fun. And, of course, Nick somehow survived. That, uh you know, the one character that everybody wants to die um, is he's going to be the one to outlast everybody. And I hate that. I hate that. But you know that's going to happen. You know that's going to happen totally. The one character you want to see die, they're going to let live forever and everything. It, it, it was cool to see or interesting to see how he's like, you know, I finally feel that everybody's catching up to me. Um, that, that That was an interesting line. And it, it it really did kind of show how messed up the world is where he's always, he's, he, it's always been like this for him, you know, with drugs, people kind of coming and killing you whenever. So he's going to probably be the best one to survive, but I don't know. I don't know. I still don't like the character. 
him like out of all the characters that I quote unquote don't like, he's like the top. I hate him. I, I absolutely hate him, but he's gonna be the one to stick around for quite some time. And I mean, that's fine. That's that's fine, I guess. So now because I, we're slowly wrapping up. I mean, I don't know how much more I can talk about myself. But I want to talk a little bit about some things that they talked on, they talked about or touched on on Talking Dead, which it was cool to say. I can't kind of wait for, you know, Chris Harder, my boy. Um, I kind of, I really can't wait for next week. It's going to be a lot of fun to kind of come back and see the guests. And we got a special guest coming. They they have a special guest coming up next week. So uh, hopefully nobody dies. They hope no one dies. It's going to be so sad. But anyway, so one thing, kind of thing that I noticed and I was talking to my brother about this and I said this to some other people and I've talked about it numerous times on Facebook it it really kind of surprises me a little or not surprises me but the 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 one guy the one guest who they had I believe he was either the creator or the co-creator or he was one of the directors for Fear the Walking Dead uh, he kept saying, you know, yes, we're going to cover everything. We're going to, we're going to cover that. Like they would ask him questions and he'd be like, well, we're going to cover that in season two. Well, we're going to cover that in season two. Oh, well, we're going to cover that in season two. Oh, well, don't worry. Cause that's going to come up in season two. Maybe we'll get it in season two. So it's like, he was clearly, Hey, season two, season two, season two, season two. And it's like, I don't know. For me, that's a sign that you really wanted to get this first season out as quick as possible. You really didn't care about this first season and you were more focused on season two. That's not a bad thing, but still have take a little time and care more about season one so we can care about season one so we'll like it even more in season two. Walking Dead kind of did that where season one essentially is it nothing to snuff, sniff at, especially because of what we got, but it still gave us characters that we cared about. It gave us humor, gave us heartbreak a little, and we liked it. We liked season one and then it's just constantly gotten better and that's how i feel a show should do it always has to try to outdo itself with every season tell a story but always kind of outdo itself not with just visual effects but with story with depth with you know everything and this it, it, it really just made it seem like they didn't care a lot about season one and they just wanted to get it out to get to season two they cared about it a little but they wanted to get to season two relatively quick uh, so that's, I, it, I mean, it is what it is. Season two was still pretty fun for, for me at least. Our well, season one was still pretty fun for me at least. I liked it. Uh, it was still, I don't know. It, it, that's just what I feel. I feel that they kind of glossed over it a little bit and they could have gotten some better stuff, but that's just me. Uh, one more other thing that I want to kind of talk about is another little conspiracy theory. I know this is a short episode and I do apologize, but when Walking Dead comes back, we are going to have bigger, longer episodes. And you can actually go back and listen to all of our previous episodes on Facebook.com slash STL Dead Air. And you can listen to all of the, that kind of evolution of what we thought the show of. Um, now, one more other thing that uh, the creator of the show or the, the, the one guy of the show kind of me- hinted at. I don't know if it was an actual hint at what's to come or if it was just, look, at I'm kind of referencing the show. I don't know. But they said that Madison kind of sometimes slips into a southern type of talk. A, slother, a southern a- a- <laughs> Sorry, a southern accent that they kind of that she kind of slips into a southern accent. And could this mean that she's related to somebody from The Walking Dead? Maybe. Maybe not. You know, uh, maybe she could be related to Rick Grimes because Rick Grimes in the comic has a brother that we'd never see. Maybe they changed it from brother to sister. And we're dealing with Rick Grimes' sister and niece and nephew. I highly doubt it. If anything, I could see her being more towards uh, related to Andrea, a cousin of Andrea or something like that. Maybe. Uh, But as of right now, I really don't think that, unless they outright say it, I really don't think that Madison's actually related to anybody from the old group or or from the group that we have now from the walking dead group. I don't think she's related to anybody. We might get a flashback at some point of her living down there before she moved to California, kind of drugged out because she was a heavy drug addict. Maybe she gets arrested, uh, arrested by, uh, maybe she gets arrested by Rick Grimes and Shane. 
uh, maybe she gets arrested by there and is in jail, and we get one little scene with them. And if they do that, that's going to be really fun because it's like, oh, th- it's a thing. Oh my gosh, yes. But it's also kind of going to be annoying because it's like, don't give us Rick and Shane and then leave. Don't do that. Don't introduce them and then not have them. That's going to be frustrating. But anyway, uh, I digress. A couple other things that I want to go over from The Talking Dead, and then we're probably going to wrap it up here relatively shortly. But uh, they talk kind of about where Travis is, and Chris Harder kind of bought up a really cool point that Madison kind of feels like Shane, where she's already ready to make the hard decisions. She's already ready to make these calls. I mean, from the last uh, from the last moments, you know, she. I don't know if. She, I really don't know if it was her or Travis. I don't remember very, very much. But one of them definitely did kill uh, Travis's ex. Uh... Liz. Killed Liz. And, you know, they were... She was just so kind of cold face about it. That was one thing that I noticed about the season finale was... uh, Even though there was this hard thing, Travis definitely seemed to have these emotions. But, you know... Madison didn't. She was just really kind of cold faced. Even when she hugged him, it wasn't like a, I'm so sorry this happened kind of feel. It was just kind of like, okay, well, I'm hugging you because I have to kind of feel. I, that was just how I kind of took it. That's how I visualized it or how I perceived it. What have you. But, I mean, that, 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 that's, that, 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 that's my whole take on kind of what happened. Uh, am I going to stick around for season two? Yeah. I'm going to be around for season two and we're going to be doing this hopefully next year or whenever. I don't know what's going to be happening, but hopefully we can do this again next year. If not, it'll be straight up on YouTube um, or up on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash STL dead air. Check that out. But I mean, other than that, I, I pretty much, I think I went over all that I really wanted to talk about episode as a whole. Uh, the episode was very, very good season as a whole. It definitely needs work. It definitely needs work and it needs to kind of push itself a little bit more. And really try to be smart about it. I mean, if we know what's going to happen, if we know, I mean, we're an audience. It's clearly for the audience that likes The Walking Dead. If we know what's going to happen in The Walking Dead, then don't try to tease us and don't get mad at us. If if the fans say, well, we're bored because I'm all for character development, but if we know what's going to happen, don't be back to square one with it. Have fun with it. Show what happened. Don't be like, okay, well, they're in the blind. Just really show all what happened. And really, really have fun with it. But anyways, it's been a fun, fun season. I've enjoyed every single moment of it. And get ready because this time next week, we're diving into season six of The Walking Dead. Of the original Dead Air. We're diving into that. And I am so excited to start this. So excited. So stay tuned, guys, because I'm Jazz Hands, your friendly neighborhood DJ, and we are going to be back next week. <laughs>